Hey guys, welcome back to the North American Guitar for another Behind the Songs feature. I'm very excited today to be seated with the wonderful Logan Ledger, who's a singer-songwriter based here in Nashville. So one of the songs that you have is called Let the Mermaids Flirt With Me. You know, that title, it's an old Mississippi John Hurt song, which I was a fan of Mississippi John, John Hurt when I was a kid. He was like my, him and Doc Watson were like the two people that I tried to play like in the very beginning, you know. So a long time ago when I was in college, I uh, basically woke up one morning and just had that, that idea as a song, you know. I just basically wrote itself within 20 or 30 minutes or something like that. And I just, you know, took the title and kind of made my own song out of it. But uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's not really a cover, but it definitely owes a lot to that original song. When my life is over, Baby, don't you grieve Just take me by the riverside Let the moon make flirt Let the mermaids flirt with me Neath the dark and roll and see We'll lay all day beneath the shade of an old seaweed tree and I would be alone in my home sweet watery home I'll be fan free under the sea let the moon mates flirt with me Let the mermaids float with me Near the dark and the rolling sea We'll lay all day beneath the shade of an old seaweed tree And I would be alone In my home, sweet watery home Fancy free under the sea. Let the moon mates flow with. 
Logan released a self-titled album a couple years ago and had the honor of working with the amazing T-Bone Burnett. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I've known T-Bone for like six years at this point, and it's totally crazy how we um, got together. Basically, his bass player, this cat named Dennis Crouch, who since then has kind of become like, honestly, like family, you know, in a way. And he basically heard a demo of me singing, sent it to T-Bone, and then T-Bone, um, contacted me and basically said he wanted to meet me and then basically the rest is history. Oh, cool. I mean, I didn't know, it was yeah, like a totally a cold <laughs> call, you know, I didn't even know Dennis at that point, you know, was, he had just heard this demo. So uh, T-Bone really kind of brought me into the music industry. And the, but you know, we spent a lot of time together and I spent a lot of time with all those musicians before we ever cut the record. So by the time we ever, we got in there, you know, it was kind of like, it already kind of coalesced and it was a thing, you know. I've been playing those songs live with those guys, you know, so awesome. very lucky to have that experience. It's really cool. you got another one called Imagining Raindrops. What's that about? I wrote that probably in 2017 or something like that. And I think literally what happened was I thought it was, I'm trying to remember, I thought it was sunny, but it was actually raining or vice versa, one of, one of the two. And I thought, oh, isn't that an interesting, you know, couldn't that be kind of a metaphor? So that's sort of where the in initial inspiration came for that song. But then, of course, it kind of evolved into something a little different. I'm looking out my window At a sunny day But I'm imagining raindrops And clouds of gray I'm wondering where you are If your heart is true And I'm imagining raindrops No sunny day could make me blue Now the world that I see through the eyes of my mind is so dark and dreary since you've left me behind and I'm wondering where you You still love me And I'm imagining raindrops The world I see I don't believe Now the world that I see through the eyes of my mind is so dark and dreary since you've left me behind. I'm imagining raindrops The world I see I don't believe I'm imagining raindrops The world I see Don't be
Logan, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. We've been so thrilled to have you here. Where can folks find your music online? Um, any of the streaming services, or yeah, you can order directly from loganledgermusic.com. You've got a lot of vinyl as well, right? Yes, and that's probably the, the most, I probably get, in terms of percentage of whatever, I probably get the most from that. So that's probably the most supportive of the artist or whatever. Yeah, good thing to plug. <laughs> <laughs> and you've also played on some other folks' uh, records more recently too, right? Yes, so I've played on a few different records recently. Um, a friend of mine named Dory Freeman, I uh, sang a song on her record called Walk Away. And also a friend of mine named Sophie Galt, who goes by Sophie and the Broken Things. She actually came out with a record today that I sang on. And then I also have an upcoming song coming out with my friend Christina Murray that I don't know if I can reveal more information. Oh, it might be out by the time this video comes out, but uh, uh, yeah, so that's coming out. And then we also have Starlight. Yeah, I wrote that song in the shower. That's the <laughs> shower song. That's another one that was like, once it had the, the hook or the title, then the song kind of just wrote itself. That, you know, was in a period of time when I was listening to a lot of Willie Nelson and uh, early Willie Nelson and Hank Cochran, you know, and um, early uh, Roger Miller, like the, the, that 1950s going into the 1960s, that era of country music and that kind of what at that time was sort of the pop country sensibility of that era. And there's all these songs that kind of had these very universal, very minimal lyrically. Um, if you think about, you know, a song like I Fall to Pieces or Crazy or, you know, that was my attempt at kind of folding myself into that style, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah, and then of course it kind of became its own sort of psychedelic thing on the record with Russ Paul who came up with an interesting guitar line and yeah, so that's that song. Starlight Ain't the day Yeah. 